أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعظم الله وأجورنا وأجوركم المصابنا أبي عبد الله الحسين عليه السلام Our dearest viewers from across the world We extend our condolences to each and every one of you Upon the death anniversary The murder of our master Al-Husayn ibn Ali Our dear Imam عليه السلام And of course we extend our condolences to our dear awaited saviour, his great grandson, and may Allah hasten his reappearance, insha'Allah. Throughout these nights, as you know, we've been covering for the first five nights, the women and the children in particular, and their involvement within the tragedy of Karbala, and trying to take lessons from their various masaib and musibah. And now, as we enter the last five nights, our attention will now focus towards the shuhada. And tonight we take on and we start discussing the topic of the companions of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Those who stood side by side with him, who didn't flutter even at the moment of, of opportunity, they stuck with him like glue. And inshallah, tonight we dedicate our learning and our tears towards them, and our tears will inshallah be invoked through the means of poetry delivered by my dear brother Ali Father. Assalamu alaikum wa Yes, just uh, echoing the words uh, of, of Sadiq tonight, we, and for the following couple of nights, we'll be, inshallah, commemorating and really connecting emotionally with the companions uh, and with the household of Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. So starting from tonight, we'll, we'll remember the companions. Uh, and what companions? There's so much we can say about these companions, but we can't really fit it into the, the mm. time slot. So hopefully... Through the poetry, we'll have a bit of an insight into their thoughts, into their minds, into their hearts, and how they feel and express their love for Imam Hussein. Ahsant, Ahsant. And there's a, there's a common theme of almost brotherhood amongst them. And I think whenever we think brotherhood, there's an element of camaraderie as well. There's a, there's a togetherness. There's a, you know, as we said, unfaltering desire to serve for the same mission. You know, that goal is so clear for them. Everyone is aligned. And there's, there's no disunity amongst them. And this is why it's said that we'll never see companions like these again. The, the people who stood so staunchly. And I think on this, I, I, I'd like to take the opportunity to discuss this, this notion of brotherhood. And it's described that the night before the day of Ashura, that the feeling within the atmosphere, within the tents, as they say, was the buzzing of bees. But the buzzing of bees with the recitation of Quran, of du'as, of supplication, and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all knew their fates what was coming the next day, and they took that time to pray and pray and pray and submit. And this was what all their lives were about. It was the sole goal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it makes you think, how do you gather this, this group, almost of friends around you, companions, friends, brothers, how do you ensure you gather the right group of friends? If Imam Hussein alayhi salam had picked the wrong people around him, at that time where he put out the candle and he said, for those of you who wish to go, you can go. There is no obligation for you to be here. We would have seen them start to walk out if he had picked the wrong sort of people. But they, his selection and the people that were drawn towards him was such that they had such an ability about them. And it's important that we actually turn and think, okay, let, let me analyze my group of friends. Let me analyze those that I hang around with. Number one, are they the right people? And then number two, if they are, great. If they're not, then... How do I ensure I pick the right sort of people to hang around? But all the most importantly as well, if there is a group of those who are off that level that you want to be a part of, you yourself need to make sure you're just like them. Otherwise, they'll be like, no, he's someone that we need to stay away from. So it's not a case of, uh, I can be the one who's relaxed and not quite in line and I'm just going to join a group that is and that's going to be fine. Inshallah, they'll accept you. But you need to take that step towards them and equally, you need to take ensure that you take step towards those who you can bring with you. And this is the... The discussion I just want to touch upon today is this notion of brotherhood. Our dear Holy Prophet says, the best of your brothers, the best of your brothers is the one who helps you to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he also prevents you from disobeying him and orders you to please him. So to cover that, the best of your brothers is the one who helps you to obey, helps you to obey, prevents you from disobeying 
and then orders you to please him. I.e., at the moment of salah, we always have the situation every day. What is the decision you make? And it's so cliche, but it's, we keep saying it over and over again. It's the battle we'll have till the last day of our death. Even when your spirituality is going through the roof, Allah gives you that test to say 1247, have you done duhr? Okay, it's, it's a tough one. And, that's, and it's stuff like this. And then it's the other side of saying, oh guys, you know what? Let's, let's go to this place this evening for dinner. Ah, oh, but the environment's actually not so good there. And we all know it deep down. We're all aware. Have you got the brother who's going to stand up and say, actually guys, you know what? Come to my place instead. At least we can be in control. We'll order the food in. It's a bit better. And you may, see, you may feel, oh, this is such a surface level type lesson, but it's one that's so blatantly obvious to us that in the camp of Imam Hussain, he had those sort of brothers that stuck together, that ensured that un, no matter what circumstance, Allah comes first. And to apply it, it's to say, okay, on the nights of the shahada of our very Imam throughout the year, do I have the brothers that are going to take me to the mosque? Or the brothers who say, oh, but, you know, Maybe we can chill out tonight actually instead. Do I have those sort of guys that are going to inspire me? Inspire me towards what I need to be. And one way to assess that is this. We say, oh Imam Hussein, if I wish I could have been there at the time, I would have given my life for you. I would have been you know, there in the front line, first one to go. That's, that's our intention. And similarly, we try and say this to our awaited saviour. We say, oh Imam, may, I, may we be amongst those who are amongst your ansar and those who pass with you, and those who are martyred with you. But with your group of friends now, can you actually, and this is a hand on heart question, can you actually picture yourself sat with the Imam in front of you and him being okay with you and your friends being around him? Yeah. Because if not, maybe we need to reassess, and maybe we need to reassess very quickly. So this is the very surface level message that we take away from the companions and the Ansar of Imam Hussain, as you mentioned at the start, each of them deserve their own 10 night series and each of them deserve so much more time than what we're giving them just now. But a very simple lesson is this, can we assess our own friendship group? Are they the sorts that are gonna help us reach the narration of the Prophet of saying, do they help you obey Allah? Do they help you to refrain from disobeying Allah? And do they help you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do they help you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because if not, reassess and change. But we think about them and we think that camaraderie that they had in that they were spending time with them. We've all been on ziyarah groups, we've all been on hajj groups, etc. And you develop that brotherhood, right? And in that brotherhood that you develop, now imagine when one of them leaves the hotel in that instance, for example. How would you react if you hear upon the death that they were killed and in a bomb blast on the way to the shrine, for example? How would that camaraderie be with the ones next to you? Yeah. And that's what they went through minute after minute in that scenario. And they would have to take care of that brother's children. And I, the conversations they must have had to say, you know what, when I pass in the next hour, please ensure that my child at least is taken care of in this way. And that's something for me, those companions were on yeah. another level. Yeah. I think the common theme between them is, is this dying, undying love for Imam Hussein. Mm. Salam. And, and it's not just Imam Hussein, it's not for who he is, but uh, not, not who the name is, it's, it's what, who he represents. The character. The yeah. character, the nobility, the valor, the honor, um, and also who he, um, who he is as a, as a person in terms of the family. So mm. a lot of these companions that are with him were, were also his, Imam Hussein's father's companions, and maybe even Rasulullah's companions as well. So you have, um, like for example, Habib ibn Madahir. Mm. Habib ibn Madahir. And um, when Sayyid Zainab was to say, uh, you know, send my regards, before Abbas said my regards to Habib Madhah, Habib Madhah almost you know, drops to the floor Allah with, Allah. with, with, uh, with uh, embarrassment, shall mm. we say. He's like, oh, the, you know, Lady Zainab sends her salams to me personally. That's an honor. Just, just the salam from Zainab Zainab is an honor for them. So imagine what kind of feeling that they had to sacrifice themselves for Imam Hussain. So everything that Imam Hussain and the Ahlul Bayt represented, they, it's, it's, really, it's, really, it's really interesting because if you were put in a situation tomorrow, and someone was to ask, you know, someone was to say, look, the next day you're going to have to come with me, for example, to Iraq and defend the shrines, for example. And this, is, this could be a reality very, very practical. soon. Yeah, 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 this could be a reality very soon. Someone, is, a marja, for example, comes out and says, this is the situation. 
um, we have to come out and defend the shrines. I know that we saw that in Iraq and millions of people flocked, which is testament to the fact that Imam Hussein's message is hitting somewhere. Swallow. It's hitting a chord in people's minds and hearts. So imagine, but living in London, not a lot of people were very optimistic about that. Well, you know what, we'll leave it for Iraq to sort out. But if the situation was put on your shoulders and you had to actually, you know, leave everything that you have, everything that you, everything that you've acquired, your education, your, your wealth, your home, your family, mm. and to make that decision to go out and defend and even sacrifice your life, it's a very tough decision. It needs the conviction. For it sure. needs the conviction, it needs that sincerity, it needs that, that undying, unwavering support and submission to the Imam of the time. And that's the kind of relationship that we should have with Imam al-Mahdi, because he is our hujjah upon us. That if he was to come out and say, look, this is the time when we need to defend ourselves, we're going to have to make that decision, yes. but with full conviction, as you say. Yeah. So in terms of the poem, um, I, it's, uh, it's, it's actually the, the, the main chorus, let's just say, it's everything within me, Haydari Husseini. Mm. Everything within me, Haydari Husseini. I am in every breath and every moment. I am nothing except Ahl al-Bayt servants. And this is the words that echoed through time and space um, from the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Everything within me, Haydari Husseini. Everything within me, Haydari Husseini. I am in every breath and every moment. I am, I am nothing except Ahlul Bayt servants. I am Haydari Husseini. Haydari Husseini. My life and death for me are but one and the same. I was drawn to them like a moth, drawn to a flame. I did not care for my wishes, nor my own name. Everything that was mine for this household became, household became. I gave them everything for a place on their wings. I gave them everything for a place on their wings. I am patient, but for them I'm impatient. I am. I am nothing except Ahlul Bayt servants. I am Haydari Husseini. Haydari Husseini. I saw them as the crown upon my creation and alone I boarded the ship of salvation it set sail and within my contemplation they became if they became my every thought and every action salvation I boarded and fate it applauded salvation I boarded and fate it applauded I am in my smiles and my bereavement I am I am nothing except Ahlul Bayt's servant I am Haydari Husseini, Haydari Husseini. I saw into divided the sons of Adam. I saw Ali alone and the world against him. I saw in awe of Zahra, even Maryam, and in my veins I saw blood of 
Bani Hashim. I made a decision, Ali and his children. I made a decision, Ali and his children. I am where I stand on the day of judgment. I am, I am nothing except Ahlul Bayt's servant. I am Haydari Husseini, Haydari Husseini. How from how many from the cradle this house they have seen some were born to them but adopted I had been some were Fatima's sons and for this they were green I wore black for I'm the son of Amul Bani. I wore black for I am the son of Amul Bani. For Hussein had children and I am one of them. For Hussein had children and I am one of them. I am to this house but a mere present I am I am nothing except Ahlul Bayt's servant I am Haydari Husseini Haydari Husseini Many thanks to the poet Nuri Allahumma salla ala Muhammad For some reason that almost gave me like a smile on my face because it sounded like an opportunity to be you know, even if you're not in the Ahlul Bayt Salam, you can still serve them to such an extent that you're like part of them almost. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's like an inspirational war cry, if you like, SubhanAllah. It's, there's something about each of the companions that you can, if you look into their story behind how, how they journeyed to Karbala and even how they were brought up, etc., you can always find a lesson from them individually. And they go on, and that's not just Imam Hussein alayhi salam's companions, that's from Rasulullah right the way through to our 11th and 12th Imams. You really can find a connection point with them. And you know, they can really act as an inspiration. And one of those that we reflect upon very regularly in the time of Ashura is, of course, Hur. Hur, the individual, and may Allah bless his soul and elevate his status infinitely. A man who he would say was perhaps responsible for diverting Imam Hussein towards the battle itself and then at the very last moment as we all know had that decision between haq and batal had the decision between heaven and hell and he has you know many famous conversations between him and imam hussein when he first approached and right the way through to his last breath and the two themes that we take from hur one is that element of decision making and the other is actually the lesson of forgiveness that imam hussein demonstrates to us and i'd like to go down the the, the root of forgiveness. It's one of the toughest things in the world to do is to forgive someone that has wronged you. And hand on heart, I'm sure we can all say no one has wronged us more than perhaps what Hur felt he had wronged Imam Hussein at that point in time. Yet Imam Hussein still had the heart to forgive him. But forgiveness, we have so many ruayat saying about the nobility of forgiveness and how it softens your heart. And indeed how if you are not able to forgive your own brother, then how do you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you? You know, you should, if you need to have a heart soft enough to say, okay, I forgive someone, now I can ask Allah to forgive me. Because if I'm going to be hard-hearted, why should Allah show any mercy upon to me? There's many of these different parables that are given. And when we look into forgiveness, our holy eighth Imam, Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam, has a beautiful poem where he actually talks about brotherly rights. But when he's talking about brotherly rights, and you can find this poem in Uyun al-Akhbar, al-Ridha alayhi salam, he has the first two lines of it where he says, أَعْضُرْ أَخَاكَ عَلَىٰ ذُنُوبِهِ وَاسْتُرْ وَغَطِّ عَلَىٰ عُيُوبِهِ So he says, forgive your brother for his sins. Cover up and hide his imperfections. So this poem is dedicated to brotherly rights. Yet the first two lines are, forgive your brother for his sins. Okay but cover up and hide his imperfections. And if you read the rest of the poem, it, it's absolutely stunning what he says. But just to focus on these first two lines. 
Forgiving your brother for his sins and then covering up and hiding his imperfections requires an individual who sees nothing but beauty in the eyes of those around him and who trusts solely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's to say, okay, yes, this individual has wronged me, but I know for sure and I trust for sure in Allah's justice. In that he's wronged me, fine, I can deal with this test Allah has given me, I have no issues with you, but Allah, I leave it to you now. I ask you to forgive him as well, but I leave it in your justice. If you believe that he's committed a crime against me that is such that requires your mercy in a certain way, then so be it. But from my perspective, I'm wiping the slate clean. And oh Allah, because I find the heart to wipe the slate clean with him, oh Allah, can you forgive me for the sin that I have hidden that no one else knows about? But whilst we say the sin that no one else knows about, if there is another brother that knows of that sin that you've committed, Imam al Riva says, hide and cover up his imperfections. Because it is so easy to let the tongue run and to talk and talk and talk. And this is a lesson that we take from Hur and Imam Hussein alayhi That regardless what they have done to you, forgive, forgive, forgive. And I go out and I say this, I go a step further and say this. If you are attending the majlis of Imam Hussein, and if you are attending the night of Hur, when some communities, they commemorate, they dedicate a night to Hur, you should feel uneasy, very, very uneasy, if you're sat there holding grudges and the inability to forgive people that are even sat in that same hall. And I say, what is the point in attending at that point if you're hearing the Masa'ib of Hur and how Imam Hussein forgave him? What is the value of your tear at that point if you cannot go away and actually forgive a brother who sat right behind you, who did something so much more futile than what took place in Karbala? What's the point? That in itself is the surface level mourning of Imam Hussein, which I'm sure has reward. But graduate, and we keep saying this word, graduate and go that step further to say, you know what, okay, tonight is the night of Hur. All these days are the days of the companions and the days of Hur. Let me try and ensure my service and my love and my mourning for Imam Hussein is not on the surface level. Rather, I'm going to go the step further, turn around at the end of this majlis and take that inspiration, take that heavy heart, take that soft heart, sorry, on that night that you start to develop and say, you know what? I know this happened and I know I've held this grudge against you for so long, but let's wipe it clean. Let's just go for it. It's Muharram. It's an important time. Let's derive lessons. Let's take them. Let's go forward. Forgive your brothers for his sins and cover up and hide their imperfections. And then you'll find a connection greater than you had in the previous year to Hur to Imam Hussein, to the connection of Karbala, to the connection of Ahl al-Bayt. And then, perhaps, we can start to come together in that brotherhood and camaraderie that they had within Imam Hussein's army and that we wish to have with our dear 12th Imam's army. Without it, we're going to have this friction. We're going to have these frustrations. We're going to have these levels of, you know, layers of uh, penetration that we have to go through in order to actually connect with the Ahl al-Bayt. Remove them. You start walking towards them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you start walking towards him, he'll come running back towards you as if a mother does as well. Mm. So one very simple lesson. Imam Hussein forgave Hur. Try and forgive in the name of Hur and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And try and do this with the intention of wiping clean so Allah can forgive you. And so you can develop that camaraderie and brothery as the companions of Imam Hussein had at the time of Karbala. Insha'Allah. And following on from that point as well, like every step that they took, they always had Imam Hussein in mind. Mm. But w I want to give a bit of a spin to this. I mean, when we say, you know, have the Ahlul Bayt in mind in any decision that you take, be it work, education, whatever it is, always have the Ahlul Bayt or ha always have Imam Hussein in mind. It's not Imam Hussein as a person, it's what he represented, mm -hmm. have that in mind. And this is what the, the companions also saw, that it's, it's what he represented, as we were mentioning earlier, and the fact that the only way to salvation is through these people, mm -hmm. is to hold on to the rope of Allah, and the rope of Allah is the Ahlul Bayt. Ah, so so right. the poem says, till the day of my death, every step, every breath, every step, every breath is for you. 
my soul and my body, everything within me mm. is for, for you. you. Inshallah, our Ba'abdullah al Hussein. Till the day of my death, every step, every breath, every step, every breath is for you. Every till the day of my death, every step, every breath, every step, every breath is for you. My soul and my body, everything within me, my soul and my body, everything within me is for you. Is for you, and up from my soul and my heart, and from you never will I part. Oh, Master, your beauty has captured my eye. For you, all the tears that I cry flow rivers. Beside Hussein, I have no one. Your name is always on my tongue. Oh, Savior, a medicine. To all my wounds in my darkness, you are my moon forever. To these words, listen, O Rose, throughout me, your name it flows. Do it's you I chose, and my heart knows deep in sorrow to these words. Listen, O Rose, throughout me, your name it flows. Do you know it's you I chose? And my heart knows deep in sorrow Whenever I can't stand You take me by my hand You take me by my hand Towards you My path, my destiny Everything within me My path, my destiny Everything within me is for you, is for you. You've taken me out of this world. My heart over you has wailed. Oh, angel, without you, I, I cannot think right. I walk without guidance or sight. I'm unwell against your name. I commit crimes, but I return time after time. Cold and pale, I beg you now, take me with you. Never ever let me leave you. No farewell, and by God and by the skies, I am with you. Until I die Every day For you I cry Beneath my eyes Your body lies Without you 
What is life? What reason should I strive? What reason should I strive? Except you, my life and so truly, everything within me is for you, is for you. Since into my dark life you came, I was raised and lived by your name. And your way, I wear your name upon my hand, whether in smiles or tears I stand every day. My heart's attached to your greatness. I can't breathe without your nearness. I'm away, away from life, away from death. Your sweet name absent from my breath. In tears I stay, oh flower of all my years, I see you so very near to the cursed sword of Shemir, and so I shed tears needing you here. All my tears and my blood testify I'm in love, testify I'm in love with Hussein. And for your tragedy, everything within me, and for your tragedy, everything within me is for you. It's for you. Many thanks to the poet. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. My tears and my blood testify that I'm in love with you, Hussein. And on that night of Ashura, on that day of Ashura, when your tears are at their most, the blood potentially comes from your head, and you are you're in that zone of conviction to Abu Abdullah. That is that point where you say, "Take it all." If it were that I'm on that day, or if it is that I'm on the day when our 12th Imam reappears, here is me showing you that every single part, let alone of my possessions, but my own body, take it. Because if I give this in your way, then for sure I give it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is in the mission, it is in the, the, the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a lot of this makes sense when we listen to hadith from our dear Imam alayhim salam So this hadith comes from our holy fifth Imam, Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam where he said that Imam Sajjad used to say, any believer who weeps for Imam Hussein and his tragedy, such that tears run down his cheek, Allah the Almighty shall accommodate him in paradise. And any believer who wept for us, for what we suffered at the hands of our enemy in the world, such that tears then run down his cheeks, Allah shall accommodate him in a lofty station. And any believer who suffers hardship in our case, such that tears then run down, such that, uh, such that, such that he weeps for us and tears run down his cheek, Allah Almighty shall repel from his face any anguish and protects him from fire on the day of judgment. And with that, we end with a few lines of poetry to allow these tears to come through, inshallah. When it comes to the day I am fragile and old, fragile and old, fragile and old, I'll tie a belt. Just so Hussein's flag I can hold I'll tie a belt just so Hussein's flag 
I can hold in my last days in my last days if you wasted your time I'm told I'll say everything's dust everything's dust and Hussein Hussein Hussein's gold and with that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the intercession of the companions of Aba Abdullah, of Hur, of Muslim, of Habib, of all of the companions of Imam Hussein. We ask for their intercession in this life and inshallah in our graves in the next. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.